Sunday after Pentecost. Be back here again in Denver. And the epistle for this 11th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's first letter, Corinthians chapter 4. Brethren, I make known unto you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and wherein you you stand, by which also you are saved. If you if you um, Brethren, I make known unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you, you are saved. If you hold fast after what manner I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all which, which I also have received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, and after that by the eleven. There then was he seen by more than five hundred brethren at once, of whom many remain until this present, and some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, and then by all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen also by me, as by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace in me hath not been void. And then the gospel is taken out according to St. Mark, chapter 7. At that time, Jesus, going out to the coast of, Ga of Tyre, came by Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the, of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring to him one deaf and dumb, and they besought him that he would lay his hand upon him. And taking him from the multitude apart, he put his fingers into his ears and spit and he touched his tongue. And and looking up to heaven, he groaned and said to him, Apheta, that is, be thou open. And immediately his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spoke rightly. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more his char he charged them, to so much the more did a great deal did they publish it. And so much the more... Did they wonder, saying, He hath done all things well. He hath made both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Today, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, but it's also August the 4th, the Feast of St. Dominic. And a few considerations on one of the greatest gifts that is given to our whole world, which is given by the Blessed Virgin Mary to St. Dominic back in 1214 A.D., 800 years ago, and that was the Holy Rosary. And that St. Dominic was fighting against the great heresy of the Albigensians. The Albigensians are very interesting. They are heretics, very much like two sides of the evil in the world today. The Albigensians taught that you could only be forgiven once, you should drink a little drink before you die, and then commit suicide and leave this world by suicide. In the world today, there is suicide more than any other time in history, including the time of the Albigensians. But before they committed suicide and took their little, little hemlock drink and committed suicide, the hemlock drink they would drink would take away all their sins they committed during life. They could only be drunk once, which is why it was recommended to take the drink and then commit suicide so that they couldn't sin again. Because after they were forgiven once, they could never be forgiven again. And the reason the heresy was so popular is because no matter what wicked thing you did, all you had to do was take the drink and all your sins would be forgiven. And then the idea would be to take it right before you die. And so they would then live in complete impurity, complete partying, and complete uh, uh, letting go of the, all the sins of the flesh and all the sins of greed. Every kind of sin was spread by the Albigensians. Because they said you would be forgiven by just taking the drink. So this is very similar to what would come later when the Protestants would say uh, with, with Martin Luther, faith alone saves. And that it doesn't matter 
uh, about your actions and your good works. So therefore you can sin boldly, said Martin Luther, and believe more boldly. So the Albigensian heresy spread over southern France and into Spain and was spreading very greatly and causing great harm to the church and also in Italy. And St. Dominic preached against it, but he was not having any success. And the Blessed Virgin Mary then gave him a weapon against, the Rose, against this heresy and against all heresies. The great weapon, it was given by our Blessed Virgin Mary to St. Dominic to stop the Albigensian heresy to begin with. And of course, the Albigensian heresy is wiped out so completely that most people today haven't even heard of the Albigensians. They are gone. Though the sins, of course, are universal and committed everywhere in the world. But the Albigensian heresy is gone by the power of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And when once Dominic received the rosary, and he began to preach the rosary, and he handed out the roses that would be, he said, these are roses that we give to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And when you give roses to Mary... She listens. Whenever a woman receives flowers, she is always more apt to listen to what we request. And she is always more apt to give us what we want. And hence we give to her 150 roses in the Holy Rosary. And these 150 rosaries, roses are called the poor man's psalter. Because in the olden days, before the printing press, everyone was expected who entered into religious life to memorize 150 psalms. In fact, if you could memorize them, you are considered a complete idiot. Everyone memorized the 150 psalms, and they would recite them from memory. Well, there are some people that couldn't remember the 150 psalms, but anyone can remember the angelic salutation that St. Gabriel gave to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she in return to him. And so, and so that, therefore, the, the, the brothers and those who couldn't memorize the 150 psalms, they would say simply 150 aves. And these 150 Hail Marys would be roses given to the Blessed Virgin Mary to be in place of the 150 psalms that the priest sings in the Holy Office. And we unite ourselves to the divine liturgy of the Church. There are two parts of the sacred liturgy, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, which is the center of the sacrifice of Calvary, the center of our worship. But then there's another part of our divine liturgy which the priest is obliged to say every day, which is the singing of the 150 psalms. We sing all 150 psalms in the course of one week in the divine office. And it's taking on the practice of the Jews of the Old Testament, continued into the New. And so the Blessed Virgin Mary has her Psalter, 150 Hail Marys in the Holy Rosary. And so that the Rosary matches the divine office. The Rosary has a crucifix in the center of it, which matches and, 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 and the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And it, has, and it is a speaking to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we're giving roses to Our Lady when the whole world is blaspheming God. The whole world is blaspheming the Blessed Virgin Mary and blaspheming the Church and blaspheming all that is holy to say holy words. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Each of these Hail Marys is a kind of an answer to the blasphemy of the world. <coughs> we will repeat the Our Father throughout each of the 15 decades. Remembering the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then, and then always ending with a doxology. Because all of our prayers are to worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And so they end each of the decades of the, ten, ten, uh, of the, of the 15 mysteries of the rosary with the glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Ghost. And these roses are given to heaven. And there are many miracles that come from these holy rosaries. Roses. When St. Dominic preached this, this, this uh, uh, rosary and he began to hand it out and he carried it on his habit, then the Albigensian heresy was wiped out. And, and, the, and the, the prayer of the rosary spread from the Dominicans to the other orders, the Franciscans, the Jesuits, all throughout the world. And many popes but blessed the Holy Rosary. So this is the great Dominican Pope, St. Pius V. And St. Pius V became the Holy Father in the 1500s. He was the Holy Father in 1571. And at that time, the Muslims were threatening the whole world. And they were going to, to wipe out Christendom as they almost did 800 years before. And St. Pius V asked the Catholic kings, he asked the Catholic armies to rise up and fight against the Muslims and defend Christendom against the attack of Islam. But they refused. Only, a few, only Spain responded, and a few scattered soldiers uh, from around the world. A few English soldiers, a few French, a few Italians. But, but main, only the Spanish Armada rose up to fight and there was no way the Spanish Armada could defeat the several, more than two million uh, members of the, of, the, of the massive Islamic crusade. So therefore, St. Pius V, who was a Dominican, the first Dominican to become a pope, St. Pius V 
wore his white habit and refused to wear the red that popes wear up until that time. And he says, I'm a Dominican, I'm going to use a Dominican weapon against the, the, the Muslims. And he asked the people throughout the world, the families and those who pray the rosary, since the soldiers won't fight, we will ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to fight for us. And there are only a few soldiers to go out and fight against the enemy. Let those soldiers have victory by the power of Mary. And he established rosary confraternities and asked the rosary to be prayed throughout the Christendom. And there the rosary spread. And hundreds of thousands of Catholics prayed the rosary. On October 7, 1571, the Spanish met the Muslims in battle, in the Battle of Lepanto. Saint Pius V was watching the battle with a vision as he was praying his rosary, and he saw the Spanish defeat and wipe out the, uh, the, the uh, Muslim horde, wipe them out completely. And he therefore immediately established the Feast of Our Lady of Victory. On the same day that he saw the victory, it happened October 7, 1571, he established the Feast of Our Lady of Victory, October 7th. Later on, this, the feast was changed its name to the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary because it was the rosary that gave the victory. The rosary has power against heresy. The rosary has power against the physical attack of the enemies trying to destroy us. And then there are many, many, many miracles of the Holy Rosary. Saint Alfa I mean, not, not Alfonso, there was a king of, of there, there are several Saint Alphonsus kings uh, in Spain, but there was an Alphonsus, one of the many Alphonsuses, king in Spain, who was not a very holy king. But he realized that the rosary was a good thing, and he, people saw him as a wicked king. He said, I'm not that wicked. And so he took a rosary, and he wore it on his uh, kingly vestments. He would wear a rosary around his waist so that everyone could see he held the rosary. He died. When he went to the judgment seat, the, guard, the devil came to him and said, This is Alphonsus, who has committed sin after sin, who is a wicked king. He is filled with every kind of sin, and let him be damned. And the devil put the... The guardian devil, we have guardian angels and guardian devils. And the devil that watched over Alfon Al Alfon King Alphonsus put all the sins of Alphonsus into a scale. And he was about to be condemned to hell. But then the Blessed Virgin Mary came down to the place of the judgment. And she took the rosary off of the waist of Alphonsus. He never said the rosary. He simply wore it so that people would be see, think that he wasn't that bad of a king and inspire others to say the rosary. And because they saw the king with the rosary, many said the rosary, but Alphonsus never did. And she put the rosary, and she put it on one side of the scales. And it completely crushed the scale down and outweighed all the sins. And therefore, she said, the rosary weighs more than all the sins. Therefore, let him not be condemned to hell. Let him go back to this earth for a few more years, that he might pray the rosary, and that he might do penance for his sins and go to heaven when he dies. And so his sins were forgiven simply because he carried the rosary on his person and did not even pray the rosary. And there are many, many times of the protection of uh, soldiers in battle and of, of, because of the power of the Holy Rosary. And there was once a monk that St. Louis de Montfort speaks about, a Franciscan, who said the rosary each day before he would come to dinner. And one day he was working, he was running late, and he didn't say his rosary. So he came to the abbot and he said, Abbot, I didn't say my rosary before the meal. Will you please allow me to go back to my cell, say the rosary, and then I'll come in for the meal a bit later. So the abbot said, fine, go back to your cell and say your rosary, and then come back. He went into his cell, and after a very long time, he did not return. And so therefore, the abbot sent a monk to see the Franciscan brother who was saying the rosary in his cell. When they opened the door of the, of the cell, they were, as he was saying, each Hail Mary, there were roses coming out of his mouth. A crown of roses came out of his mouth. Each Hail Mary, and the Blessed Virgin Mary was sitting opposite him, and each rose went to the head of the Blessed Virgin and crowned her. But the monk didn't come back. So then the abbot sent two more monks to see what was happened to the other ones. And then they didn't come back. They saw the same thing. Then the abbot finally went, and they saw that he was saying the rosary, and that, uh, and that and, to, and he could not be, he was enveloped with light, with angels on either side, and as he was seeing his Hail Marys, they were crowning the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so that these are the roses of our crowning the Blessed Virgin when we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And as we're traveling through the rosary, we consider the 15 holy mysteries of our faith. The mysteries that brought about our redemption, so the slayed Satan, the, 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 the joyful, the sorrowful, and the glorious mysteries upon which our salvation is based. And so the rosary is exceedingly powerful. The devil hates it very much. One, every Catholic should have a rosary in their pocket. My father used to always say when I was a child, 
There are three obligations that the man has when he walks around. He has to have in his pocket a pocket knife. <laughs> he has to have in his pocket his wallet. And he has to have a rosary. And if he doesn't have those three things, he's not a man. <laughs> so my father used to give us a little sir, we have to have a pocket knife, we have to have our, our, our wallet, and we have to have the rosary. And always carry the rosary wherever you go. The rosary has so much power. The machine guns against the devil and the protection. On my own priesthood, there was a lady who was born in Vietnam who she was baptized Catholic, but of course she wasn't really raised a good Catholic, though she was baptized. And the Vietnam War came, and uh, she was given by her grandmother a rosary. She took it, she did not know that it was an instrument of prayer. She knew that it stood for the Blessed Virgin Mary's protection, and she knew that she liked the crucifix on it, and the little metal that was in the middle with a picture of the Blessed Virgin on one side, and so that she would keep it with her at all times. And several times her boat was about to sink when the, when the boat people were coming across from trying to get out of Vietnam. They were attacked, and she would hold the rosary, and the communists didn't see them. And she would hold the rosary, and they were able to get onto the boat. They were able to come over to America. And when she came to America, she continued to hold that rosary, not knowing that it was a, a something for which to, that you were supposed to pray. She thought it was simply like a medal that you would carry for protection. Finally, after many years, she was learned that you could say the rosary and say the prayers of the rosary, and then she came very firm in her faith. So the rosary has a great power, and there's a power that the devil cannot stand. The Blessed Virgin Mary at Fatima said, pray the rosary. Pray the rosary. Lucia would go to heaven, Jacinta would go to heaven, but Francesco wasn't as good as Lucia and Jacinta. He would also go to heaven if he prayed many rosaries. And so those of us that aren't perfect like Francesco, we need to pray many rosaries. And remember also the first rosary, the children used to pray the rosary when the Blessed Virgin Mary came. And they didn't pray it perfectly. They did the abbreviated version of the rosary. Hail Mary, Holy Mary, Hail Mary, Holy Mary, and not say all the prayers because it would get faster through the rosary and then they would go play. The Blessed Virgin appeared to them and said, I'm glad that you say Hail Mary and Holy Mary. I'm glad that you say my name and you praise me, but I'd be even more glad if you said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, and continue to say all the prayers of the rosary, which I continue to do. And so the rosary is the principal weapon against the devil in our times, and it brings in the holy sacrifices of the Mass, it brings in the holy scriptures, the songs of David, it brings in also the prayer of the church in its holy, in its holy bravery, and it helps us to contemplate and consider the things of God. It has a great power. It transforms our lives. And the rosary works slowly and patiently. It works on slowly changing us, and slowly strengthening us, and slowly turning us away from sin, and slowly opening our minds. Yeah, God gives our Blessed Virgin Palm special graces to those that say the rosary. And so we must live by the rosary, say the Holy Rosary, and not ever forget its great power and its, uh, uh, to save us in this great time of crisis in the church. The rosary ends heresies. The rosary defends against the attack of the enemy. The rosary protects our, our, our things. The rosary helps us stay in the state of grace. And the rosary is the greatest weapon that we can use in our times after the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass to defeat Satan. And anyone can grab on to the Holy Rosary. In prison, prisoners who would not have a physical rosary would simply take rocks and put them together, or ten rocks, and put them together and pray. St. Francis Cabrini laid out a kind of rosary with rocks so she didn't have her rosary, her rosary with her and laid out a cross and prayed over Denver. And so that the, the Holy Rosary is a great power for us and we must have great confidence in the Holy Rosary and we need it and the devil hates it. The devil's terrified of it. And so keep a rosary in your vehicle. Keep a rosary on your person. And say the Holy Rosary as we should say it every day. But make sure that we say that Holy Rosary. There was another lady who lived a completely evil life and, and, and was married four or five times. But she made a vow when she was young that she would say the rosary every day. And it's also one of our priests of the society, one of the classmates of my brother, an Australian. He says this lady came to him on, on, and, and repented in her older, olden times and said, what did you do? He said, well, I, always, I, I lived a bad life. I didn't go to church. But I made a vow when I was about 10 years old. I would say the rosary every day. And even on the day that she was in a bad, one day she was going to her bad marriage, her second or third invalid marriage. And as she was in her second or third invalid marriage, she realized it's almost midnight. I haven't said my rosary. Just a minute. And she said her rosary. And she would say her rosary every day, whether it was a good day or a bad day. And then as time progressed, she repented and came back to God. And so 
We must have great confidence in the power of the rosary. Let's use that holy rosary, live by the rosary. It's a great gift that St. Dominic gave us, for which he can light the world on fire and save us from the assaults of the enemy. I'm going to close the deck of you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.